Okay, so today we're going to be spectating some trios, and while I am spectating, we're going to be focusing on what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, but I'm also going to be answering questions from my YouTube chat here where I stream. And my thought process is questions that they have, you probably have as well. So first things first, I need to go die here. Yep, there we go. This is the guy I want. That's the guy I want. Let's go ahead and jump right in here. Now, question number one that I want to answer that I get all the time. We are now, today is February 8th. We are one week away from season two. What do I think the next meta is going to be? And it's a little bit tough to say. Right now, we have the RPK, the TAC B. There's a few ARs that are okay. We've got the Sockin. We've got the Rao. I think it depends on what they do with ARs and LMGs, as well as snipers. So they could nerf all of the LMGs, or maybe they just nerf the RPK. If they only nerf the RPK, we're going to see the Rao come into the mix. We're going to see the Sockin. If they buff ARs, then we're in a pretty good spot. We've got, you know, the Lockman. We've got the M4. We've got the TAC 56. I do see them nerfing the TAC V a little bit. And, of course, we have snipers as well, right? What's going to happen with the snipers? Are we going to see one-shot snipers? So, a lot of, you know, there could be a lot of changes. You're in a tough spot here. Yeah, he's going to go down. So, let's see if we switch teams. No, there's still... Oh, he just went down in Big Observatory. When did I start playing Warzone? I started playing Warzone May of 2020 in Verdansk. What are some important fundamentals that everyone should try to master? One of the biggest things, and I'll leave this video for you in the comments, is going to be aim. You know, you can learn positioning. If you work on your aim, you will immediately become better at this game. You'll start to learn positioning. You'll start to learn how to change your pace and, the, you know, what pace to play at, when to challenge versus when not to challenge. But it really all does come down to hitting shots. You know, hitting shots and getting kills allows you to kick off that fight. Good job right here going for the stronghold immediately right here. Oh, there's another guy. He just missed some shots right there. He also got caught without a three-plate vest, guys. We really want to try to find that three-plate vest early because if we don't, that's what ends up happening. Now, I will say with Season 2, we're not going to have three-plate vests anymore. It's going to go back to the way Warzone 1 was. When you fly in, you're going to have two plates, but as soon as you find a plate, you're going to be able to throw that in. Can I switch players right here? I don't think I can. As soon as you find a plate, you can throw that third plate in. So there's no more looting up for that three plate vest. How to boost confidence in solos. How to boost confidence in solos is probably one of the easier things. I personally love playing solos. And I wish we could switch players right now. Maybe he's going to... Yep. Okay, so we're in Goosh. Then let's go back to how to boost confidence in solos. Because it's a little bit different than duos, trios, and quads. But a lot of it does come down to the same two things. Okay, so let's go to player cam right here. He's got the P890, so eight rounds. Able to tag just a little bit. Two tags right there, so not broken yet. Good job using your tactical. Uh-oh, he got caught right there. Okay, so he gets a kill. He's at six already, guys. He's off to, like, a really good start, and he got caught with the dolphin dive. That is definitely one change I would like to see is being able to shoot a little bit quicker out of the dolphin dive. There's a pretty noticeable delay between when you hit and when you can start shooting. That, again, you know, kind of hurts that outplay potential. If they speed that up just a little bit, you'll be able to make a few more plays. Let's see. This guy might go down here. Let's see what we got going on. We got Jailer. He's got high ground. He's going to... This guy... Jailer got him. No, we didn't... What is going on? This guy with six kills is probably losing his mind right now. He's probably losing his mind. And that other enemy that he was challenging had good position with the high ground. That's why the platform is so good. So we got zero kills here. This guy's flying in. There we go. Okay, Scruffy's back. So we got Captain Cruncher here with zero. We've got Scruffy here. And we've got Headhunter. Let's talk about confidence in solos. Let's see what they do here, by the way. They're going to go ahead and ping all the way over this way. They kind of need to get a little bit of a momentum going. I'm not sure where the strongholds are. But they got to find a way to get some cash flow, get loadout guns, and start pushing with information. Which leads me into how to boost confidence in solos. The one thing that I love about solos is you remove the positioning dynamic. You remove a lot of the outplay dynamic where you get a kill, but then that next teammate's pushing you. You remove a lot of the change of pace. For solos, my whole goal is just information plus execution. Is to get information, drive around trying to find people, focus on my cash flow to get UAVs and bounty contracts. And then from there, it's just about hitting shots. Right, We can challenge people one-on-one, -on -one, and as long as we win that 50-50, we're in a good position. I cannot switch players at this moment because this guy's just floating, but it looks like they're kind of going out in the middle of nowhere for their regain process. Still very early. When I split this game up, guys, when I... Okay, so they're doing a safe cracker, which is why he's floating. He's going to go ahead and land on one of these. Headhunter's probably going to land on the second one, and they're going to be able to do this pretty quickly. That's $6,000. They're going to have, what, 12 or 13? They'll definitely be... 
be able to buy some guns and a UE. When I split this game up, it's kind of three phases. Phase number one is the beginning of the first circle. That, like, two minutes or whatever before Stronghold opens, right? So that's where we're looting up. We're trying to get an SMG that we're comfortable with. We're trying to find that three play best. Then we go into the first circle closing, which is like four minutes, as well as second circle, third circle, and fourth circle before it closes, right? So not fourth circle starting to close. So we got first circle not closing, just starting off. We've got the first circle closing, second circle, third circle, beginning of fourth circle. That is going to be your mid game. End game begins when fourth circle starts to close. And then from there, you know, we start to play it out. And what ends up happening is we start to understand when to push and when not to push. When do we need to start slowing ourselves down and start playing for the win? Indicators to look for how to know when to push. In duos, your indicator a lot of times is going to be a breaker or down, right? So if in, in, when I'm in duos, if I get a breaker down, I can go play that a little bit more aggressive. In trios, you got to get a knock. In quads, you really got to get a knock and probably a thirst as well if you can. Let's see what these other guys are doing here. They're just looted up. He's got 15 grand. Uh, right as of right now, they need 8, 6, 6, and 24. So they do have enough for a Lodi right here if they want to buy it, which is a great option. They're also going to have free loadouts here in a little bit. They are decreasing the price of loadouts with Season 2. So we're going to see what that changes to. If I had to guess, I would guess maybe 6,000 a player. So 6,000 in solos, 12,000 in duos. We've got um, 18,000 in trios and then 24,000 in quads. But going back to the indicator about when to push, you know, a lot of times you do have to play it a little bit more strategic because of that lack of outplay potential. So you need to get that down and thirst before you can really push in. The other thing that I will say is when to push. I just told you that in solos, we can play more aggressive. In duos, we want to get a knock and then push. But you got to also think about that with a team of three or four and their positioning. Meaning if I got one guy in the building and then the other two or three are separated, I can play that a little bit more aggressive and I can push in there and just take that kill and then focus on the other two enemies. Let's see what we got here. They're not in a bad position here. You know, they're just trying to get regained. And this is one thing that I will tell you. He's got, okay, so Headhunt has two, he's got zero, and this guy has three. When we look at dropping a high kill game, guys, there is still a lot of time in this game. There is still a lot of time to go. That Now, what I will say is they've got to find a buy station, they've got to find a car, and they've got to get back in the action. Skip all this out-of-circle stuff right here. Skip all this area. Skip, don't go here, don't go here. We're looking at Saeed City, we're looking at caves, we're looking at hydro and observatory. Kind of this area right here is probably your hot area of the map. I'll even cut out cemetery. So like this right here is your hot area. Just based on where people like to play, Saeed City is actually a very hot area. Uh, there's generally a lot of people that land there and there's generally a lot of people that rotate there. When rotating, should you go early or late? Early rotations and mid-game rotations should be done with a car. It's the safer route, and I, let me address this real quick. I know what a lot of you are going to say, but Joe, it's a free UAV for everybody. Everybody knows where I am. That's fine, okay? Just swerve. Just make it a, make you a hard target to hit. Find an LTV where you're a little bit safer. Be careful, right? Make sure you're paying attention to your cover. Be careful just driving wide out in the open, but the car allows you to rotate quicker, allows you to rotate safer, allows you to get to the best position possible. And when we talk about quicker, it's going to take you a lot of time to run from here to Saeed City. If they have a car, they can easily get over there much quicker. So when we talk about rotating quicker, that's going to help us drop those high kill games. Now, when we talk about endgame, let's, let's circle back to that question during endgame. Let's circle back to that. When you're in the gunsmith, what stat do you want to focus on? So my long range option, I'm focusing on recoil and bullet velocity. Those are the two main things. We obviously can't have a heavy recoil gun. We also need good bullet velocity. That means we're going to have to not account for bullet drop as much. And it's going to be more hit scan, right? If you put your, your scope on somebody, you're able to get that. You're able to connect on those high damage areas. You know, when we look, are they trying to buy Lodi here? I, I don't know what they're trying to do. These guys are just vibing out here. And look, this is the way I think some of you guys play. I am going to, we'll circle back to the gunsmith here in a second. Oh, they're buying, they're buying weapons, but they did not buy a Lodi. Why did they not? Oh, is he going to buy a Lodi? He should buy a Lodi here. Then they have enough for, no, they're not buying a Lodi here. Okay, so they're deciding to save their cash. Now let's see what they do from here. Now going back to the gunsmith, long range options is gonna be recoil and bullet velocity. Close range option is gonna be like sprint to fire speed, ADS speed, as well as um, as well as just your sprint speed in general. We don't wanna be run, running around sluggish. 
Is say having a car like an extra armor? It is. Look, good players will be able to smoke you out of a car. They'll be able to hit you. But that's where you got to kind of swerve back and forth. If you're getting shot at, don't just drive in a straight line. Like, swerve back and forth. Make you a hard target to hit. Now, right here, they've got guns. They're not in a bad spot here. He's got the RPK and the sniper, which is not a good combination at all. Unless he has a medium backpack and he's got an SMG. This guy's got an RPK. I mean, it doesn't surprise me here. And going back to what I said earlier, I don't know what's going to happen with the meta shift. You know, it'll be really interesting to see what they do. They do have a UAV. This guy has the Vaznev. So let's see what they find on UAV. They've got nothing around here. And this is where I think a lot of you get stuck. What are you supposed to do in this situation? You know, this is where the car, while you have the 20 to 25 second UAV, I'm not sure exactly how long it lasts anymore. You know, I don't know exactly what the timer is, but while you have this UAV, you want to get the best sense possible as to where teams are even if you don't go push it at least gives you some information this is also where i think a lot of you get stuck scruffy does scruffy have plates he, maybe it's just head hunt here that needs a three plate vest but when we're looking at this guys there's nothing that they need they don't need to loot up they're good to go you're good to go start pushing a little bit i'm not saying you have to play like a pro player and just start full sending oh my gosh he's gonna get smoked he does have self revive maybe this whole entire team bought self revives too can we we switch players right here while he's down we might not be able to we might not be able to he got thirsted right there that's unfortunate with the precision okay so captain cruncher's down to he's got a three plate vest i don't think headhunt here has a uh i don't think he has a three plate vest good shot got the knock no way to get the thirst though so got to be careful here is it worth having ghost perk package for advantage or overkill i will always lean on I will always lean on high alert because that perk package right now, now with season two, actually, hold on real quick. Let's go back to perk package here, but let's see how they play this. Now, this is the problem with him not having an SMG, guys. You gotta, you gotta run. You gotta run either long, you gotta run long range option and then close range option. Buy back real quick, 100%. Dead, 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 dead. What's his teammate? He got the buyback. So this is a great example of as long as you're alive, you're good to go. Now he should just ditch Captain Cruncher here. He should just, he should not fly down on this guy, guys. This is one, this is one where you just need to let it go. And maybe he'll be okay. Like, this is a very risky play right here. This is a risky play. It might pay off, but there are times where it absolutely will not pay off. Um, three kills right here. They need to buy teammate back. They do have the buy station straight ahead. Ghost perk package. I like the high alert one. You know, of course, we're going to get custom perk packages here with season two. But for right now, the perk package that I'm running has double time, bomb squad, restock or resupply, which helps me with my smokes and my drill charges to deal with campers. And then it has uh, high alert, which helps a lot. Good shots right there. Now, when we look at this, guys, the one thing you need to know, look how far this rotation is, right? So when you're looking at this, not only do you have a far way to rotate, but you're out in the open. So I'm looking at, like, I probably disengage this right here, and I push to this truck, and I just get into circle. And not only do I get in, I get into, like, caves. I get into quarry. Like, I get into a much better position. Now, they can hold these guys out of circle. You see the sniper glint right to your right? His, oh, the guy's over to his left. He's there. Okay, so they got one kill. Okay, so he's up to four. And by the way, when we talk about pacing, the one thing I will say is don't lose confidence because you didn't get off to a good start. There are plenty of games where I walk into endgame with nine kills myself, and I walk away with 19. And I just picked up 10 kills because of good positioning and rotations. How do you deal with the camper? Play in adjacent building. Grab drill charges, guys. Drill charges are great for that. But look, at it, look for an adjacent building. Oh my gosh, he just got sniped. I think this team, no, this team, they got the buyback off. So this team is still alive here. They're they're in the blender, guys. They are 100% in the blender here. But this game is still going on, and you never know what can happen. It's funny. I was talking about this the other day with some people in my coaching program that, look, we all have those blender games. But at the end of the day, if you find a way to win that blender game, you don't care that you were in the blender, right? You just care that you won. So as long as we're alive, we can kind of keep regaining here. It's, it's, you know, land on. I don't know what there is to land on. You can land on Lodi. Now, when we look at this, guys, this loadout has cover. This loadout has cover. This loadout is out in the open, so I would not want to land here. I would not want to land there. This loadout out in the open. So maybe to this one, this one looks awfully tempting. You could even, you could technically land out here because it has a little bit of cover and then rotate into zone. 
So how do we deal with campers? We look for adjacent buildings that we can find a window to get a knock. Then from there, we can evaluate what exactly we want to do. Right here, he's got a little bit of cover, but not a lot, right? He does have a little bit of cover with the hillside. He can immediately push down into these buildings. And notice right here because of the cash flow, right? That's one thing I want you to pay attention to. Because of his cash flow, what can he do? He can immediately go buy his teammate back. You know, as soon as he gets a three plate vest, he, not even, I would go buy him back. You can kind of work your way over looting. When we think about looting, when you hear those crates, it's less likely that somebody's around. Of course, there could be. But look, people naturally love to loot. They naturally just cannot let crates go unopened for whatever reason. So when they hear it, don't switch it out. Don't switch it out for the pistols, not for the pistols. Pick up the pistols. They're so good. They're so good. It's what it is. What's my recommended lethal? I like drill charges. You can get thirst with them. It really, when people are sitting in a building, even if you get a, like, a tag on somebody, that drill charge allows you to, look at this, look at this, what do you notice? Good job right here. Scruffy's got 4k. They're back to, they're not back to full strength, but what are they? They're getting a little bit closer. They at least can have, no, you're about to get shot. Don't just sit out in the open. Guys, when you buy back, you got to expect somebody to look. If somebody's in the area, they're of course going to rotate over that way. It's pretty obvious where that buyback was. It's pretty obvious where that buyback was. That's the first thing. Over to your right, you saw him. Over to your right, you're, he's about to get fried from his right side, 100%. He's going to get absolutely smoked here unless that guy didn't see him. There was definitely a guy over there. There was definitely... There was de Look at that SMG. Look at that. Yeah, grab that one. Grab that. Yeah, there you go. Now, now you really regret giving up your pistols, don't you? They did get the buyback off. So they're back to at least somewhat full strength. Over to your right side, he's dead. He's dead, 100%. This guy's going to fry him. You better get out of here quick. You better throw a smoke and go. He got absolutely smoked. Uh, is Headhunt down? I don't think Headhunt is down. And Scruffy's caught with just a P90, so he's got to be really careful. What about the throwing knife? Throwing knife is a good option for Thirst. Um, it's definitely a more aggressive play. If you're starting to split more, I you can absolutely... He, that's not the range that you're going to have success there. That's just not the range. They might be they might be in a pretty bad spot here. If you're a more aggressive player, you can play with throwing knives. I like I really like he's getting shot in the No, is he getting shot up front? Yeah, he's getting shot in front of him. I really like drill charges because it forces people to move. It forces campers to move in buildings. It gives you an advantage like a break, or maybe even you tag him a little bit. That allows you to push in and, and have a little bit more confidence. You know, when we look at this game and the lack of outplay potential, the reason there's a lack of outplay potential is because obviously there's no slide canceling, right? I'm not advocating for slide canceling coming back. But what slide canceling allowed us in Warzone 1 to do was to get a slight advantage because of how quick we could get around that corner, right? So it, slide canceling was a little bit broken because of the data component and how fast data was transmitted. That would give you the advantage. Jump peeking corners, right? Especially with a bunny hop in Warzone 1. That allowed us to create a small little window where we could have the advantage over somebody that's just holding an angle. Unfortunately, in Warzone 2, everything that we do here, they're straight ahead. So you're going to have to push left here pretty quickly, and he doesn't have smokes. I think... Yeah, he's straight ahead on top of the rock. Everything that we do in Warzone 2, we get punished for. There's no slide canceling. When we dolphin dive, it takes forever to start shooting. If we jump peek a corner, you can't ADS. You can't bunny hop. So... By using drill charges to kind of bring this full circle, that just, we need to get any advantage that we can get. Any little advantage that we can get, whether it's playing an adjacent building and getting a down, whether it's using a drill charge to break somebody. You know, part of it is just finding a way to get that slight little advantage to win that 50-50. By the way, one thing I want to highlight right here, guys, this team's absolutely in the blender, but they're still alive. They still have a chance to win this game. They absolutely do. Are there any other buy stations in zone? No, they're never going to be able to get to quarry. So this is on these two guys right here to clutch up. And I think they both might have loadout here. Headhunt's got two. Scruffy's got four. And, and be honest, guys, is this a normal game of what yours looks like? I think it could be potentially like a game that yours looks like, right? A little bit of wandering, a little bit in the blender. Didn't get off to a great start. But, you know, look, they are still in a good spot here. They've got high ground. They've got cover. They've got to remember this team up the hill. Good job. Yep, you just saw them. There's one straight ahead of you. One's over to your left side just a little bit. Good shots right there. Mounted just gave away his positioning a little bit too early. What's the best strategy to take a solo quad trios or doers when your team is dead? Uh, disengage. Disengage. I will say that 99.9% .9 of you, especially if you're watching my channel, are probably not. Guess who's back? Back again. Joe is back. Tell a friend. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go try to. Mm, do I distract these guys? 
I'm gonna I wanna keep watching this team. I'm just gonna let him kill me. I just wanna go back to that team. I wanna keep watching how they play out, especially because we've been watching we've been playing with them the whole time. So uh, I would say disengage, guys. If you're Yeah, buddy. Get it, Scruffy. Get it, get it, Scruffy. Look at that. I just finished 13th. I didn't even do anything this whole game. What can I say? It's the best 13th play finish you'll ever see. Best strategy is sometimes to just disengage, especially if your team is dead. We kind of saw that here, right? Obviously, they got a few kills, but by disengaging and, and taking... Uh oh over to your left side. Yep, he's down below. No. Okay. He's got six. Don't rush to revive. You've got plenty of time here. Wait, his teammate's back because of the jailbreak. I didn't even think about that. Glass to your left, straight ahead. Glass to your right. This guy's freaking out right now. He doesn't know what to do. He can revive his teammate. His teammate needs to push in to cover a little bit more. Down below you. Right down below you. Literally right down below you. Yeah, right in that building. I hear the footsteps. Go revive your teammate. Yeah, this you have plenty of time to revive, by the way. You have like 40-something seconds to revive, especially if they don't take any more shots after. So use that to your advantage. Don't rush to revive. Clear the area. But this guy was never going to actually go back to revive his teammate. Uh, One straight up. One above you. There's somebody floating around here. Let's see this end game. They're in a really bad spot here. Now this guy's by himself. In this moment, you just got to try to find a way. There's not a whole lot he can do, but if you can find a way to get away, you just got to let everybody else fight. You're uh, straight ahead of you. Yeah, see if you can get... He's looting. Go now. Go now. Go now. Take your take advantage right now before he gets a gun. Now he's gone. Now he's over to your right. Dead. He's dead. He's dead. Okay. What do we got? Six teams. We're moving on. What do we got here? Scammer has six. We've got six teams... Uh, 16 other people right here. Hurry up and load. Scammer's got six. I want to see what we're working with here. Okay, or not. Okay, uh, Pop Smoke's got three, so that's nine total, and Cross has six. That's 15 total right now. Pretty good game right here. You know, not a bad game at all. He's only got a pistol, though, so he's got to be careful. Let's go on to the next player here. He probably came back with Jailbreak again. Now, his mistake was he needed to loot somebody. He needed to just push in and loot. This guy's got the cast off. This is a floor loot cast off right here. I promise you. I know this. I know the gun. I know the gun. People straight ahead of you over, over on the left side. Yeah, right there. Good job creating cover, but he didn't get a cover enough. He just missed the movement. Guys, this isn't Battlefield. If there's any little hint of movement, it is most likely a player. It's either a player or a bird, and you'll figure out which one it is pretty quick. He tried. That's an A-plus effort. That's a tough effort right there. Okay. We're down to five teams. This end game's getting wild. We are pacing like crazy right here. Five teams. Okay, we got 10 kills here from Guppy Hunter. Get it, Guppy. We've got five kills here. That's 15 total as a squad. This guy looks pretty good. He's got Orion right here. Can we load one more player here so I can see what we're working with? We got 10 kills. We got five kills. Hurry up and load. We've got five kills here. Let's go to the guy with 10. Uh, five other teams, 12 other people. So we are looking at a few different full teams here. Now, they're kind of in a little bit of a weird spot. This is a situation where they're not going to be able to get, when we talk about end game, right? In circle with cover, then power position. That's his teammate shooting on the roof. They're not, oh, be careful. Good, sh yep. Don't go challenge that immediately. Let your teammates go. That's okay. He's got self. All three have self. He does have durable here. He does have durable. He's not going to be able to get that thirst, but... Yeah, you got to be careful here because you have to push into that. What's this guy doing? Can we get in? He's down. Yeah, clear. Nah, he went for the thirst first. He should have just gone for the... He should have just gone for the... the uh, he should have found the second guy. Because if that guy... You know, they're probably not going to get the thirst there with his teammate. Now, in this moment right here, in circle with cover, then power position. Notice that they kind of have a little bit... Of, they don't have high ground here. Yeah, now you got to give that up. They don't have high ground. Wait for circle pull. They got a pretty good circle pull right here. He can try to get to this building. If he can get to this building right here, he's in a good spot to rotate early. You know, this is obviously not a bad spot to be, but he needs... Wait, there's people and he's going to rotate early here. There's one. Dead. Yep, keep pushing forward. Good smoke. Smoke creates cover. He creates his cover. You know, that's the problem with rotating out in the open. And now... They have the power position because they have cover, and they can just hold everybody. There's people behind. There's one right there. He's got 12. There's one right there. Knocked. He's got two two teams, three other people. It's a 2v2v1. 2v2v1. Where is this guy? He, they are rotating out in the open. He has no smokes. He's trying to play the bush. 1v2. They just choked. 
Did I don't know what's going on. We're not even loading quicker. Two guys right there straight ahead. We can see them on the spectating screen. They're going to push up. It's 2v1. Absolutely keep the pressure on. Let's see what they do. There's the last kill. Guys, I hope you found today's video helpful. And we finished with Morris here who gets 15. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. As always, make sure you are subscribed down below. And I will see you in the next one.